Water fluoridation was first introduced to the public on January 25, 1945 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, as a result of a controlled experiment by Henry Trondley Dean, the first director of the National Institute of Dental Research. This controlled experiment was an investigation to see if water fluoridation aided in the prevention of tooth decay. Prior to the water fluoridation experiment, and providing the supposed influence of the Grand Rapids study, was the research of a mysterious dentist, Frederick McKay, and the father of operative dentistry, Green Vardaman Black. In the early 1900s, a then unknown phenomenon was occurring called Colorado brown stain, which was now referred to as dental fluorosis. With the help of other researchers, the two dentists discovered that fluoride was the contributing factor to their mattled teeth and determined that it also prevented cavities. Based upon these early studies and understandings, Henry Dean wished to demonstrate that by adding fluoride to a community's drinking water supply, it would make the local dentist's jobs easier by reducing the amount of cavities. Fluoridation became an official health policy by the U.S. Public Health Service in 1951. Many people believe that water fluoridation was first introduced in the Russian gulags of Siberia and then later adapted into the Nazi concentration camps to make the prisoners more docile and acceptable to the conditions there. In other words, to make them more easily controllable and also causing sterility in women and lowering the IQ of the prisoners. Evidence for these claims is hard to find, as it seems the only source to this claim dates back to the book The Crimes and Punishment of I.G. Farben by Joseph Borkin. Despite this claim, there is apparently no evidence or documentation of this, however there are some very curious links in regards to the early days of water fluoridation and its pioneers. These links could provide the keys to unlocking a massive conspiracy and clear and intentional violations of human rights on a massive scale. Henry Tronley Dean, the pioneering investigator of water fluoridation, served with the United States Army during World War I until 1919 when he returned home to continue his private practice in dentistry. In 1921, Dean entered the United States Public Health Service and worked in U.S. Marine hospitals until he was placed in charge of dental research at the National Institute of Health. In 1945, he became director, and following World War II, he directed epidemiologic studies for the German army. When the Natural Institute for Dental Research was established in 1948, he was given the director position, which he held until his retirement in 1953, where he soon joined the notorious American Dental Association and its secretary of the Council on Dental Research. Another curious figure is Dr. William Lorne Hutton known as a pioneer in diphtheria control and responsible for adding fluoride to the drinking water in Canada shortly after it was introduced in the USA on June 20, 1945. During World War I, Hutton served overseas with the Royal Canadian Regiment as a medical officer until he was wounded on October 1, 1916. Hutton became the head medical officer of health in the city of Brantford, the first Canadian city to fluoridate their water. For the first three months, they did not even notify the public. Dr. Hutton was also the president of the Eugenic Society of Canada between 1930 and 1938, during which time he became the head medical officer in Brampton in 1937. Hutton was the author of many papers on the subjects of public health and eugenics, a very curious combination of subject matter. The Eugenic Society of Canada was formed in November 1930 in Toronto, Ontario and was influenced by the Eugenic Society of Great Britain as well as the American Eugenic Society. The group was headed by A.R. Kaufman, founder of the Kitchener-based Kaufman Rubber Company and nicknamed Canada's Mr. Birth Control because of his involvement in various sterilization programs and the eugenics movement. In honor of Kaufman, a public school and YMCA family center in Kitchener have been named after him. In 1932, Dr. Hutton became the Eugenic Society's president. Addressing the third annual convention of the Eugenic Society, Hutton declared that the falling birth rate among intelligent people of the Anglo-Saxon race was a racial and economic disaster because those who strive the most are just the ones who hesitate to have children. He also warned that the population of mental deficients is growing far more rapidly than is the general population. After the initial experiments for water fluoridation in 1945, further research was done to determine the appropriate levels of fluoride to add to the water supply. 
It was during this time that a well-known toxicologist named Harold Hodge became involved in severe violations of human rights while being rewarded for his services. He was also actively involved in the promotion of the water fluoridation agenda, despite the negative press it was receiving because of its link to being a main ingredient in rat poison. Dr. Harold Hodge, a distinguished toxicologist on the Rochester team, has carefully investigated the safety of fluoridation. Well, to put it very simply, fluoride <coughs> is safe <coughs> at one part per minute. <clears throat> this brings us back to the, to the fundamental point. Fluoride is safe, and I think I can say in conclusion that there is no health hazard that justifies postponing water fluoridation. Hodge was also selected to head the United States Atomic Energy Commission's Division of Pharmacology and Toxicology for the Manhattan Project, the research and development project responsible for producing and testing the first atomic bombs. Strangely, this project was also responsible for gathering intelligence on the German nuclear energy project during World War II. Hodge was also the planner for the notorious plutonium and uranium injection experiments, where several subjects were unknowingly injected with plutonium and uranium during experiments to test the limits of exposure. Despite the fact that this later created an uproar and the US government had to pay the victims' families $400,000 each, Hodge became the president for the International Association for Dental Research in 1947, the first president of the Society of Toxicology in 1960, president for the American Society for Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics between 1966 and 1967, and the president of the Association of the Medical School Pharmacologists from 1968 to 1970, a criminal rewarded to the highest of degrees. Another shady and influential character in the scheme of things was Dr. Gerald Judy Cox, a Mellon Institute researcher whose studies into fluoride and his experimentations with rats greatly influenced the decision to begin water fluoridation programs. It was Cox who first suggested that fluoride be added to public water supplies. Cox is well known for stating that the case should be regarded as proved, and after the public became concerned after learning that fluoride was a main ingredient in rat poison, stated, the present trend toward complete removal of fluoride from water and food may need some reversal. Cox was later appointed to be the director of dental research in the School of Dentistry and was heavily involved and worked with the aluminum and sugar industries. The largest fluoridated population on the planet is the United States. And the United States is also the biggest promoter through exporting their expertise at the CDC and their big um, associations, medical dental associations, um, exporting that knowledge to the rest of the world. And largely, other countries in the rest of the world either are not interested in fluoridation or have tried it and found it to be false and have abandoned it. The next largest country by uh, percentage is likely Australia. Um, Australia has a, fair, a fairly robust fluoridation program Although, just in the past uh, half year or so, the law has changed to allow municipalities to opt out of fluoridation should the will of the people indicate that they want to do that. And my last understanding is that um, many municipalities have dropped the fluoridation of the public water supplies um, under the, the, um, the flexibility of the new law. Um, smaller countries like Ireland that is, the Republic of Ireland, have mandated mandatory fluoridation. So that entire population, if it's drinking water from a public water supply, are drinking fluoridated water. The high that was reported by Health Canada in 2005 was 45.1% per of the Canadian population was drinking fluoridated water. And the reality in 2013, as I sit here and speak to you, is that it's now down 28%, down to 32.5%.
of Canadians are drinking fluoridated water. And if we look at the actual population numbers, we're talking about 10.1 million people, largely in four or five major cities in the country, and predominantly in the greater Toronto area. That pretty much encompasses about six and a half, seven million people of the 10.1 in Canada. So the rest of the people that are drinking fluoridated water are predominantly in the cities of Winnipeg, Ottawa, London, um, Halifax, uh, Edmonton, but not cities like Calgary, Montreal, Vancouver. These cities are um, these cities are progressive, and they have either never had fluoridation or they have ceased. We have been fluoridating our water in Tennessee for more than 50 years, but never before has there been more talk than that fluoridating our water might be a bad idea and a health risk. My Dennis Ferrier has the latest developments on a story that impacts all of us. Joey Hensley is a respected physician. He's also a Tennessee state lawmaker. He is now combining those two professions to make a very strong point. We've been doing it 50 years. Uh, but just because we've been doing something 50 years doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. Hensley's talking about something most of us don't even think about, fluoridating water. After much research, the doctor has sent out a letter to every water district in Tennessee asking them to stop fluoridating water. The evidence, he says, fluoride works better when you rub it on your teeth, not when you drink it. That fluoridation is medication added to water without your permission, and that's wrong. But most of all, because the National Research Council believes young children are getting three to four times the dose of fluoride as adults. And now the American Dental Association is telling mothers not to make baby formula with fluoridated water because of fear of dental fluorosis. And that's big news, and that really hasn't been uh, uh, publicized very much. Health researcher Dan Stockin believes that this ADA warning about baby formula and fluoride is just the beginning. This, the ramifications of this are so huge, I'm sure that the state health department hasn't quite figured it out yet. Because see, once the door cracks, and it is now for what it does to teeth, the next group, one of the next groups that's going to start raising their hands and saying, what about us, is people who are on dialysis and people who have borderline kidney damage and impairment. Then there's all the people that have hypothyroidism. Scientists like Nobel Prize winner Arvid Carlson and a large group of EPA scientists have called for the banning of fluoride because we don't know how much we're ingesting, so we don't know if we're being poisoned. There are so many potential legal things about to happen that as a taxpayer, I think it would be really, really smart for the water districts and the metro Nashville Look, just if people want fluoride, let them use fluoridated toothpaste and spit it out. But don't go poisoning everyone. Don't be, don't continue this after everyone knows all this information now, just because it's not convenient.